for you. I am outside. It is raining at the moment. It's not too bad. I'm kind of under a bit of uh, shade, not shade here, but a bit of an overhang, so I'm not too wet. What makes you brave uh, in your life? I wanna talk about um, what we've been speaking on in the mornings and at night, about uh, finding courage. And there's this scripture uh, that is um, a theme. Many times in Bibles you have themes that match up between different uh, books of the Bible. The book of John talks about especially God as Father. We've looked at this for a few weeks. The book of Hebrews also talks about Jesus as our high priest. The two are connected. And it's connected in the sense that the revelation that Jesus uh, came, the revelation of the name of God as Father, which only the Son could reveal. Um, it's something that you want to take to heart as how it can affect you. One of the things it does is it gives you strong confidence. The Bible says, um, in the fear of the Lord and in the knowledge of God, there's strong confidence. Now, when we have talked, and it's taken me a few weeks to construct all this together, there's these tie-ins uh, between these concepts, the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God. They're always put together. When you read in the Bible about, um, it says the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God and uh, the spirit of understanding and the knowledge of the Lord, understanding and knowledge are two distinct things in the Bible. We have different ways of saying that today than they do in the scripture. What we often think of when we would read knowledge is information in our brain. But if you find yourself in that position, there's nothing wrong with you. That's how we think. But in the Bible, when it's talking about the knowledge of God, it's not talking about book knowledge. It's talking about revelation knowledge, meaning unless God shows you, you'll never really see it. Jesus said, um, no one knows the Father except for the Son, and no one knows the Son except for the Father. And... Um, when it comes to the Father, it says, Jesus says, no one knows the Father except for the Son and those to whom he, meaning the Son, uh, wills to um, reveal him. Or chooses is exactly how it says it in the Greek, to reveal him to. So God, uh, the Father, can only be revealed by the Son, Jesus. Now, that glorifies who Jesus is. The only revelation of God as Father came through Jesus. Um, the prophets, it says, and it distinctly showed us this. We've talked about this the last few weeks. There's two ways God spoke. He spoke through the prophets in times past, but he also uh, speaks through a son, is how it put it. Andrew Murray, uh, the commentator and the Bible commentary, probably the most uh, well-known, uh, beloved Bible commentary, Andrew Murray calls this son-wise. It's not a person, it's a way in which God speaks. So when Jesus says, I have manifested your name, Father, to them. What he's meaning is, I've lived it out. He hasn't just taught it, he's lived it, he's been it. Well, confidence comes from a relationship, which is key to catch. It doesn't come from information. And uh, it's very apparent to me in the Bible that it, it's, 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 it's not just at a quick reading. This is not just a surface reading. This is like really key to a concept to catch. As a matter of fact, it's the thing Jesus came to do, is reveal God as Father. As his Father, but also to us, he can choose to reveal the Father to you. Now, why I say that, it, it sounds kind of cliche, but the point is, it doesn't say I'm going to reveal God to you. He says I'm going to real, reveal the Father to you. It's very precise. And it's, the way, it's not the way he said it, it's what he says. We take it for granted because we don't realize before Jesus, God was not known as Father. And uh, if you've been on uh, kind of the study tour with us of this concept, it really is important to catch this. In that relationship comes confidence. Real confidence is a Christian. You're not equipped by information here. You're equipped by a relationship. The way that the book of Hebrews says this is, is that there is strong confidence behind the veil. That's the revelatory relationship of glory in the Holy of Holies, God revealing himself to you. It's like a self-revelation of God. It's highly supernatural. It's highly significant. And it took Jesus' um, death on the cross to split that veil torn 
in two, but it's really important to catch this. I can't teach it to you. No one can. Only Jesus can reveal it. Jesus' words in Matthew are, those to whom the Son chooses to reveal the Father to. So the choice isn't the pastor's or ours or there's nothing. A, a life of significance um, really is missing as a Christian the value that Jesus is placing on this. He can reveal the Father to you now. Missing it isn't a hiccup. It's actually the reason he was sent. It was the revelation that he came that, brought, that he brought to me and to you. This morning when I was preaching, um, and now if I step out, I'm in the rain more and more the farther out I go. Now, strong confidence, a shelter, there's a shelter or there's um, protection in the knowledge of God. Now, what I mean by knowledge isn't information up here. It's the knowledge of God because he's revealed himself to you. It really changes uh, your exposure to the rain makes you wet. Your exposure to God in this way, it totally changes who you are. As I stand out here, it's one little step. <laughs> I'm in the rain. It's just like, this isn't a far thing away from you. It's very close. It's as close as Jesus revealing him to you. Uh, so there's. it's not like you have to go on a long journey to kind of find this, but this is the, the this is the destination. When Jesus says, I am the way, the question is, what is he the way to? And it's very defined. I'm the way to the Father. That's the point. So there's a there's a grip to these verses. That's it, it's it's a, in, it's not a matter of how do I execute if I do the perfect job of something, it's gonna make its way to me. It's a relationship between you and God in your heart. And how you feel this understanding in your mind really matters because you have to get to the place where inside yourself you see the significance of who you are to the Lord. Sometimes people say, who am I in Christ? I think the way to look at this is, who are you to the Lord? Well, you are someone that really is valuable to him because he wants to reveal the Father to you. What Jesus has done, what it's taken him to do this is incredible. He went to the cross. I don't know if I could say you really understand the love of God totally until you understand exactly what this is meaning. It's not just that um, something wants to be taken away from you that's really good. It's like you don't have it to begin with. Jesus has to reveal it to you. It's not like you lost this at some point of your life. It's that only Jesus can give you this relationship. Fine. Original sin lost this. But this is the, the package that really, Jesus is the way, but the Father's the destination. And it's not our work that gets us there. It's very clear. You have to understand that it, it's a, always, uh, one of the things you see with Jesus is he kept referring to this as like, I've manifested your name. Well, what does he mean by that? It means I am always among my Father's business. He had a relationship with the Father that wasn't just heavenly, it, it was on earth, uh, the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. That's how we're supposed to approach God. Don't let that be taken from you. Right at the start, how you pray is you have to really realize that Jesus wants this relationship for you. He came to give it to you. The devil says, no way. He refu He'll want to tell you, God refuses you. But Jesus says, no, he doesn't. I choose you. Jesus ch can choose you. Satan will absolutely want to sever this, but the only way he can sever it is to cancel it out in your thoughts, your mind. It's not for you. God would refuse you. You really can't let that be taken from you. The hope of glory, um, our hope rests in here. So every Christian, it's not that you're deserving of this, but Jesus can choose to let you or to reveal the Father to you. Sometimes when we're overcome, sometimes, you know, sometimes we want to put on a good face, uh, a fake face. We're faking it. Um, you know, I'm standing in real rain right now. And the only thing that would get me dry is to get a little closer. So the closer I get to the Lord, it staves off the effects of the world. But how? Well, how Jesus showed us he did it was his relationship with the Father. 
I'm always a, a, about my father's business. You can't make it as a Christian the way God has enabled you to make it without knowing this relationship with the father. And it's not just that you're a failure. It's that the fruitfulness, the figuring things out. You know, one of the things I said um, a few weeks ago is Jesus never didn't know what to do. Well, that I, how many of us can say that? It was why? Because of his relationship with the Father. And it's a revelatory relationship. And he, it's not that he's gifted it to you already, but he can give it to you. You don't have to figure things out on yourself. You have a Heavenly Father that loves you. And Jesus is saying, it's not information that, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a inform, informative thing. It's not just the words of Jesus. This has to be revealed to you. So it's not revealed by Pastor Paul or someone else. It's all of us needing to realize we need this. This is why Jesus came. And this is the destination. And we're really wanting to just teach you the importance of you to him. It's so important to catch this. You value, you must be very valuable to the Lord. Because we know that Jesus died for us, but he also died for us to do this, to enable us so that we not only can follow him, but he can be revealed to us. It puts you in a very different position in life. You are changed when this happens. You are a different person. And um, the Bible says, knock and the door will be open to you. Seek and you will find. Um, all those things are true, but at, at a certain point in your heart, how does this happen? Well, the first step is, I believe, just to assure yourself of your value. You're valuable to the Lord. And the enemy does not want you to know. Like It's like why the enemy fights for people not to know this. It's incredible to me. Why? Because it really is valuable to you to live like this? No, it's like, this is the way we're to live. We're going to be very different people. You're not going to compete with other people. You're not going to this, you're not going to that. It changes by exposure in relationship, in a way, the essence eventually of who we become if we respond to the Lord. So allow yourself to believe, yes, but also trust the Lord that he can show you the Father. Jesus is the only one that can do this and believe and trust him that he can for you. Um, you know, Jesus talks about finding a treasure in a, a field, selling everything you have. This is what he's, this is the, the thing that he's kind of talking about. And when Esau and Jacob, it talks about God saying, Esau, I hated and Jacob, I loved. It was all, the reason is Esau hated the birthright. The birthright is this. The birthright was a relationship that Esau was given in glory. And it really matters to God that we carefully would choose even friends or surround ourselves with people who would want to listen to this, would want to know and follow the Father, would want to let Jesus take you there. You don't want to have a life surrounded by people who don't want to work towards this goal. It will affect everything you have and it will affect everything you will become. And that's the destination of your life and it's amazing it's a relationship with God through his son Jesus and Jesus wants this to take effect for you are you not a Christian without it I'm not getting into all that what I'm saying is he's the way but the father's the destination so you don't want to dial down and believe less of yourself what the enemy uh, has kind of in his mind often is to devalue you but God must value you. If you, you're part of his family, he's trying to bring you into this. And the Lord's Prayer is a great place to start. Our Father who art in heaven. Jesus wants you to approach God like this. He wants you to start off right at the beginning. The disciples said, teach us how to pray. This is how not just prayer works, but how you'll be enabled for it to work. He wants that approach. He wants you to follow him in that way to believe that he is the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except by him and that's really important to understand let that truth reach you in your heart don't try and figure everything out 
lot of things you can't figure out in your life until this becomes real to you. It's not that you'll figure them out, but it's like there'll be a change in you as Jesus reveals this. I can tell you when you study what are called revivals, especially the big ones, essentially at the core of them is this. It's that in them, this starts happening on a mass, uh, it, and it affects your outlook. One of the things I find about God revealing the Father to you, Jesus revealing the Father to you, is it starts to dramatically affect your outlook on life, on, on life, on the things that you like. Finding uh, kind of uh, this in your, you know, the way that you look at everything, this will really change your outlook. You can see this in the Bible. You can see this, that this becomes something, though, that is, uh, you, you can't, underestimate how far the enemy will go to fight you from keeping you from this. He doesn't want you saved and he certainly doesn't want this to happen. Sometimes people say, go find yourself. You know, he needs to find himself. You, the Bible, and it very clearly outlines, I'm going to speak about this maybe next Sunday, uh, especially in the evening. How you find yourself is tied to this. That's what the Bible actually says. It's interesting. And there's something in this that when we say you got to go find yourself, the only place you're going to find yourself is here. And that's the teaching of Scripture. We're going to get to that. But don't look for yourself somewhere other than in this interaction with the Father. That is exactly what the Bible will show, what teaches you. Everything that, the, that, that it's in here is in the Bible too. It's not like you have to fill in with extra biblical teaching. Jesus spends a lot of his time teaching about this. And it doesn't make any sense. It's not something that can be taught. It's only something that can be revealed. And he has to reveal it to you. Drawing close to the Lord. Drawing close to the Father. The evidence of this, we can look at the evidence. But there's sheer fruitfulness that abounds in here. Um, and it's, 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 it's like the plan of redemption. Exodus chapter 19 said that when God brought the people out uh, and redeemed the people of Israel, the entire point was, I have brought you here on eagle's wings, wings so that I have brought you to myself. That's where it started. Then he talks about the land. Then he talks about the promises. Then he talks about the covenant. And all those are great, but our understanding is skewed if we don't realize the first thing was not the promise, the covenant, the law. It was bringing him God bringing you to him. Peter restates this as the point to the church that God tried it with the people of Israel. He's doing it again now uh, through Jesus. And that it is not minor teaching. It is the major points of Jesus' goal as to what he came to do. Our Father who art in heaven. Has this touched you? The, the place to begin is realizing that it can and do not under any circumstance replace the destination of where Jesus wants to take you with anything other than this. Now, yes, we want to go to heaven, but the destination of Jesus purpose to come was to take you, reveal the father to you. And any other destination is not from God. It's not in the Bible because the Bible says that's the point. It's not like allow someone to talk you out of it. It's don't exchange in your mind any other destination. This is what Jesus has to you, to, to, for you. Sometimes it's like, well, what does he have for me to do? I think what you're to do becomes clearer once th this is done. <laughs> it's like, I don't think you can evaluate yourself even without, you can't find yourself somewhere else. Success isn't based in a set of principles, it's based in a relationship. And how you handle that relationship, well, in a way, you just have to respond. You have to believe. You have to have faith. Don't bury uh, this stuff and say, it's not for me. Bring it forward and say, God, I want to be fruitful in this relationship. Don't get mad, but allow the Lord to work on you. He will have to lead you. He will guide you. Uh, he will take you into all truth. He has a destination for you, and this is the destination. 
it will change everything about your your outlook will be different on life when this comes for you a lot of us you know jesus ties this and i'm going to close with this thought he ties this that he's revealing the father he ties it to come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden i will give you rest rest for your souls it's put there not by act it's, it's it's the same conversation it's the next verse the only way that you find his yoke is easy and his burden is light is when he reveals the father to you and that's what is the yoke is him revealing the father he puts this on you he t that means he yokes like an oxen two together he yokes you together with the father what a thought not my teaching jesus words it's exactly what it is and that's what's for you what a thought that's the destination jesus will fight for you for this you don't have to handle this all on yourself why i say that because i can feel it and I, this is the verse it said this is his burden it's jesus burden to do this for you he's fighting to do this for you to take this for you it's his burden to do this allow him to do it for you just say yes to the holy spirit guiding you at this moment let's just pray together lord we just bow our hearts to you and we ask at this moment we would begin to say yes to lord to your burden we allow you to take this burden for us jesus we fix our eyes on you the author and finisher of our faith you can do this lord it's your burden to do it but we have to let you do it and we in our hearts say yes to you for your purpose here in Christ's name. You know what you're doing, Lord. Thank you for doing it for us. Lord, it's not that we enable you to do anything, but we say yes, it's your burden. We don't have to carry it, but Lord, we allow, we say in this moment, say, yeah, Lord, I wanna be yoked to what you have for me here in these verses. We won't find what you will have for us to do until we find this for our lives. May God reveal the Father in his time, through his Son, Jesus, to each one of us. Find the destination, which is him. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you.